Having heard all that, you're pro if you're still watching the video, you're probably wondering, how can I become a cook? How can I get into cooking? How can I cook my partner? Cook, 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 I love saying cook. Cook old. While an inherently fun and funny word to say for an odd autistic person like myself, it is a real and valid kink with a long and storied history. If we're going to dive into that history, tell you all about it, how to make it work, how to have a good first session so you can cook your best. <laughs> And then we're going to, at the end, we're going to get into some risks to let you know what you're really getting yourself into. Hi, I'm Jerome, sexual psychologist and owner of GetTheButters.com. If you want to support these sexual health videos, you can visit us at GetTheButters.com. <laughs> you can also get more in-depth sexual health education at LTAsex.com. So before we get into things today, let's get into some important definitions. Cuckoo is a man who derives sexual pleasure from having their partner have sex with someone else. Cuck queen is the opposite, where that's a woman who derives pressure from having her partner have sex with someone else. Now, cuck queen is the word, uh, Q-U-E-A-N. This is different from the cuck queen and cuck king, who are the, the partner who actually goes and has sex with someone else, right? This is also separate from the bull, who is the external partner that is typically uh, brought in for sexual satisfaction. This is the person that the cut queen is going to have sex with, generally. So let's get into the historical perspective of the culture. So it has deep historical roots going all the way back to Europe. Um, originally, it referred to a man whose wife was unfaithful. So it started as a shame thing, as a disgrace thing. But then over time, it moved on to something that was a bit more sexualized. Then the word actually comes from uh, the cuckoo bird, the cuckoo bird, uh, who will lay their eggs in the nest of another bird, forcing them to raise that bird. Cuckoo. In modern times, though, it's taken on a bit of a different air, where it's no longer necessarily about the disgracing of the partner, but the partner is more embedded within the act and sometimes is even the catalyst for the cuckoldry in the first place. Cuckoldry in popular media has become a bit more popular, not as popular as it actually is in how we actually do it, how often we do it. But more recently in the TV show Billions, there was a plot where one of the businessmen was ex doing a lot of BDSM things, including being cuckolded. Um, you can also see the meme of the cuck chair all throughout social media, where it's like every hotel room has its, has the cuck chair. It's literally just the chair that you sit in near the desk. But in actuality, it can function as a cuck chair. So oh, hotels know what people are doing. <laughs> Now let's talk about cuckold versus hot wife. These are two very similar but different topics that we should make distinct. Hot wifing is typically where you think your wife is so hot, or husband, hot wife, hot husbandry, your partner is so hot that you just have to share them with the world. How think, think of what Kanye West does, where he makes Bianca and Kim dress all provocatively and nakedly. He's just decorating them and showing them to the world. That is exactly like hot wife thing. Um, is inappropriate, which is why we don't like it, and he really shouldn't be doing it in public, especially with kids around and whatnot. But it, it's typically how we know that is the trophy wife, where you would just have a beautiful woman on your arm. You're not necessarily dressing her up inappropriately in public. But we are in 2024 where people are pushing boundaries, so here we are. Cuckoldry, on the other hand, is very specifically wherein one partner is being humiliated for their sexual interest. They are made to feel lesser, smaller, weaker, like a punk, like a sissy. They're sometimes made to like belch the biological material out of their partner of the other person. It is a entirely different scenario. Hot wife versus cuckold. Now let's get into cuck queen, is how I'm pronouncing it, because it, you have to make it distinct from the cuck queen, as we talked about in the, in the beginning. Um, the cuck queen is a term where a woman will derive pleasure from their partner being uh, doing infidelity things with other people. This is not as well known. And often in media, it is portrayed as like the harmful thing where women are just like uh, and feeling terrible about it. But then there are also times where you'll see the woman and she'll just like fly him. There are also times where um, you, there are also times where 
Typically, they're just trying to avoid embarrassment and you're sticking your nose into their private business. How about that? How about you mind your business and let that cut Queen Anne have her husband who fucks around and is the most desirable thing on the planet, but never brings home kids to her or does bring home kids to her because she thinks his DNA is so special. The thing is, with kink and BDSM, all this stuff is very unique and psychological. It hits on very different points within all of us. And if it really doesn't hit for you, and that's totally fine. But for some people, this is exactly what they want to do. They want to feel this sort of like and pressure or, or in other words, humiliation. And they want to have that satisfaction of knowing how sexually desirable their partner are. They want to have that extra kinky, that extra objectable, that sort of secret sciencey thing there. I'm missing a word. You know what I'm getting at, though. It's kinky, it's fun, it's exciting. It is really just something that almost people of any gender, any age, any race, they take part in. You should know that cuck queens are basically as common as cuck holes. Don't ever let the media fool you into thinking that this is not something that people enjoy. Now, this is the part I've been waiting on because I love being able to talk about people's firsthand experiences. So now we're going to get into the bull's experience. And uh, as a reminder, the bull is the person who's having sex with the partner. Uh, and this is the outside partner. Okay. Thanks to places like Reddit and r slash bull psychology, we are able to talk to the bulls directly or they're able to talk to us directly and tell us exactly what, what's on their mind. So a lot of people wonder, why would someone go fuck someone else's partner? <laughs> like, why would you do that? Here's what they say. So I'm just going to read them straight to you. I won't even paraphrase. Building a relationship with a couple, helping them come closer together, get them to open up with communication and to have sense of self, Gerard Butler 12 says. Being a sex symbol. I don't want to steal anyone's wife, but it feels good being objectified in a respectful way and looked at as a sexual machine that adds a sense of naughtiness to their relationship. When I leave their house or hotel, I close the door behind me feeling like a sex god and smile at the thought of them immediately fucking passionately at the thought of how the wife and I just did something forbidden and making a bad girl out of a good wife, nor Laurel Leans. I'm in my mid-50s, regular hassle-free sex without needing to woo a woman is good enough motivation for me, CNDYNN96. -N my biggest fantasy was impregnating another man's wife, but I got a vasectomy because it was too risky. I can't afford to pay child support. If they changed their mind and wanted me to help, help support the child. Otherwise, some of my biggest driving forces, I love making women come, discovering their bodies and bringing them pleasure. It feels good to do that to many different women and especially feels good to do it in front of their husband. I also love to dominate a woman and do nasty, kinky things to her that she won't let her husband do. I like it when we have raw animalistic sex and she comes harder and works to please me more than she does with her man. Craving Slut says. Last but not least, the pleasure of the experience in and of itself. Being with attractive married women, that's a big taboo. Trying new experiences with couples. But I really did it simply because I enjoyed it. I love sex. And I discovered I had an exhibitionist side, so I've been off MX. Now, having heard all that, you're pro if you're still watching the video, you're probably wondering, how can I become a cuck? How can I get into cucking? How can I cuck my partner? Cuck, 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 cuck,
but typically they're going to be open and interested into listening at the very least, which would make it uh, good. Now, of course, when you're talking about I statements, you also need to make sure that you're talking about how this benefits both of you, because look, there are realities to every relationship. And if you're going to cook, um, often you're feeling some level of like insecurity, but you don't want your wife to leave you or something like that. It's like many different reasons, but that is a common through line in the psychology where you feel like deeply insecure because your wife is so much hotter than you, you feel, or you allowing her or sharing her around, um, gives her the freedom to explore her sexuality while also feeling safe within the security of your relationship. Having that openness can ensure that that relationship stays together for the long term, right? So that can be one mutual benefit. The other mutual benefit is she just gets fucked a lot or he gets just get fucked a lot. Like I'm getting more dick is usually not a bad thing for most people. Um, but it in typically great. People typically like these sorts of things. You can just be very blunt about it. Um, you know, partner, you know what would interest them. You do entice them. You can be open, honest with your desires and their desires. Lastly, respect boundaries. Again, this is a difficult topic. If people are expressing, no, I don't want to do this. And you are just like, okay. If it's something that you still want to do, you can probably find a way, not not find a way, because that sounds very sneaky, but like typically more often eager and willing to try things that they hadn't considered before, if you respect their boundaries initially, because that shows them that you are a person worth respecting. Now, you can't necessarily expect that they will, and you shouldn't. You should take the no, respect it, honor it. If that behavior is displayed, what I've often found is that people are typically more willing to come back to it maybe a year or two later. If you're in a long-term relationship, you've got your entire lives to experience this. You don't have to rush it. You can take your time, respect their boundaries. If it's a no forever, if it's a no for today, and that's fine. Now, let's get into tips for your first time of cook. Cook it and cut, cook. All right, so make sure you have your boundaries clear set from the beginning. When you're talking about your desires, Make sure that in that conversation, you're already talking about things that would make you uncomfortable so that you can also talk about remediation practices. Um, you have to come into it with an open mind. You're going to have to take it slowly. Um, make sure that those boundaries are set up from the beginning. Don't disrespect them. Show your partner that you're worthy of trust by respecting those boundaries. You never know what your partner will allow if you respect the boundaries that they put in the first place just respect their boundaries. There are so many benefits. They trust you. They love you. Even if you never get to have what you exactly want, maybe they'll let you go experience it on your own. There are so many different ways that you can make this work for yourself. Respect the boundaries. Choose the right person. Choosing the right bull is going to be very important. You want someone who's not trying to steal your wife. You want someone who knows what's up, maybe someone with experience, maybe someone who's also married, someone who's committed and is not going to just like run off with your wife, um, partner, or your husband. Typically, the us cuckold. Most often, the people who are searching for this information are going to be the husband looking for uh, fuck their wife. You know, cuck cleaning is accessible. It's there. It's a thing. I'm not going to keep uh, over that. You never included in this. Um, right person. You might also be willing to get like a professional sex worker for your first time, because that is a good way to make sure that that person is not going to be a part of your social circle. Um, professionals are here for a reason. They have skills. They know boundaries. They're not going to risk their professional reputation and career to out you or uh, blackmail you anything. Sex workers are professionals. I am pro sex work for a reason. Because professional people doing things is important and sex is a need, not just a want. Now, some of the more kinky things may be seen as a want, but truthfully, sexual expression, we know is a need. We know it. We've has already proven that humans need to connect with each other on a sexual level, period. We need sexual professionals. That's why I'm a sexual professional. Next up, tips for your right time, communicate continuously, okay? If you are, have already done everything, everything else, these next couple things will already be kind of like natural for you. Uh, communicate, focus on consent, start slowly. We've already talked about these things. Make sure that you are going at your own pace, respecting everyone's own, own pace, because there's three people here now, right? 
after maybe that first time with the sex worker, maybe then you can have a first time with the, someone who's in your life because sex workers are expensive and maybe you only need them for the one specialty thing. Maybe you want somebody who's more regular. Sex workers are typically more um, perfect. Sometimes that can be a little bit more intimidating. So like maybe you want someone who's just a bit more normal. Um, whatever your desires may be, find your next partner, keep the same standard, check your boundaries, keep moving, and cuck on. <laughs> The benefits of cuckoldry. Now, that may be an odd thing to hear because when people think about kinks, they're often like, oh, that's so horny, that's so dirty, that's not innocent. But we are already multiple minutes into this video. I'm in, in recording, I'm like 17 minutes in. I don't know how long the cut, cut will be, but we're really long into this. And if you have not seen that there's some level of benefit to this behavior by now, I don't think you're listening. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a summary of the benefits and they're pretty simple. It can benefit couples by enhancing intimacy. Intimacy bringing you closer, trust, sexual satisfaction, exploration of fantasies. These things are foundational events to people in relationships. We often forget that people in relationships are still fully sexual beings all on their own. Just because you have the mate bonding does not delete your ability to feel more sexual than your partner is able to fulfill. There's lots of things in there that can benefit basically any couple. And this doesn't even have to be a non-monogamy thing. This can just be a fun thing. Because as long as the couple's doing it together, I don't really see how it's non-monogamous, to be frank. The next benefit is more of a benefit for, say, disabled. With cuckoldry, one of the things that commonly happens, as I've spoken about before, is that um, one of the partners will be making up for their lack of sexual ability. Maybe their penis is too small, maybe they're too fat, maybe they're too tired, maybe they're too old, maybe they have erectile dysfunction, maybe they can't fuck right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The other things they can be making up for is that maybe they're just physically disabled and can't do it. Maybe it's just really painful and difficult. But with this, you can find somebody to rail your partner exactly how you want them to be railed. And then once that done, she can go sit on your lap, make out with you, love you, and you guys can go back to living your regular life. She can have her sexual satisfaction completely. You can get your rocks off the voyeurism. These are one of the many beautiful ways that sex can change throughout your life. People who are disabled aren't always disabled. Um, they don't always start as disabled. They don't always end as disabled. Sometimes like things come and go throughout life. There have been times throughout my life where I've been physically disabled from various injuries. Um, there were times when I was like over 650 pounds and I was disabled. Um, I'm mentally disabled, right? So like there are some people who, even if they're physically disabled, they can't really get into the mood. Maybe they're asexual, all sorts of things. There's a million reasons why having someone else come in and rail your partner out is going to be beneficial for your relationship. And cuckoldry might be a great solution for your relationship if you're missing that. And we've reached the not most important part, but a critical part. And wherever we're talking about these kinks and fetishes, we must be mindful of the potential drawbacks. So let's get into the informed consent for cuckoldry. First up, emotional risks. Jealousy and insecurity, impacts on self-esteem, and changes to your relationship dynamics. No matter what, you're going to risk jealousy. Jealousy is a natural and normal thing. It's one of the protective mechanisms for monogamous relationships. A lot of people hate them. A lot of people think they're bad. Any emotion is bad unmanaged. Moving on. The impact on self-esteem can actually be pretty substantial. You may know intuitively that you are not sexually the best, but knowing it and seeing it play out in front of you are two totally different things. Watching somebody rail your partner, watching your partner get railed, watching your partner rail someone else can be emotionally devastating no matter how hot the fantasy might be right so don't ever be afraid of just talking about cuckoldry and never doing it. fantasy is satisfying and fun and it's a perfectly valid way to explore these sorts of kinks and fetishes in a emotionally safer way thirdly because this is changing how things work or it might be changing how things work depending on how authentic you feel in your relationship so far um there's the possibility for a change to relationship dynamics outside of the bedroom. You need to be prepared for this because sometimes people aren't. We like to think that we live in this like super prayer time where sexuality does not actually impl influence your social status. It does, and it always will, because it tells people who you are and what your psyche is like and whether or not 
you can be dominated or controlled. And that's part of why cuckoldry is always going to be sort of hidden away because many men who participated in it are people of high status and they do it at home, you know, privacy where they can be safe and their fantasies and desires can be safe and their sexuality can be safe from damaging their personal, their persona. Keep things private. That is just the number one things I'm going to say to you about all of this. Um, there's no else that's going to protect you from any sort of like public scrutiny when it comes to any sort of special kink, not just cuckoldry. Privacy, discretion and privacy. Now, no matter what you do, aftercare is going to be important because, mm, you know, you're fucking someone else. <laughs> I always talk about how the brain and the body are two totally different mechanisms, right? Like they, they can, they work together, they influence one another, but at the end of the day, these are separate systems and your body may react in a way they may make your mind react in a way. You have to be aware that these things are natural, normal and be expected. You should be ready to offer reassurance and support either to the cuck or the cup, uh, cup king. Um, maybe even bull, because honestly, fucking somebody else's partner is kind of like vulnerable. You know, like if, if this is your friend, like they might need to be reassured that you're not going to hate them, right? Because again, the mind and the body are different. Your mind may know it's not adultery. Your body may feel like it is. Your heart may feel like it is. Your endocrine system may feel like it is. And you don't know until you're in that situation. Cuckoldry, like many kinks, can be deeply, deeply satisfying when approached with respect, communication, and care. By understanding the historical context, everything that goes into it, the modern implications, what it takes to make a great session, what it takes to be a great cuck, and how this enhances your relationship. I hope that I have helped bring you closer to your cuck experience or further away from the cuck experience that you don't want. <laughs> but either way, I hope that I've enlightened you and brought you some more knowledge in this world of sexual health education. Thank you so much for watching. As always, Drum Stuart Nichols, sexual psychologist, you can check us out the blog, read these entire things at getthebutters.com. You can check us out on social media at Get the Butters. Everything we do is Get the Butters. If you want more in depth or you want to view some of our more older content from back when I was first starting, this is more like basic sex education stuff. Um, you're going to go to ltasec.com to check that out. But you can support these videos by going to getthebutters.com, checking out our lube, checking out our butters, bath bombs, hair supplies, all that stuff. We make it all right here. I'm sitting on the porch of Butters HQ. Where I sit here all day and learn. I'm a bit of a recluse. I'm a nerd. All I care about is sexual health. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for learning about sexual health. And I hope to see you guys again next time. Keep it sexy. So, I'm adding this little bit at the end of the video. This is the first video I've done in about mm, probably 10 years. I just wanted to knock it out and get it done so I can get comfortable back being on screen. If you're watching this far into the video, please give me feedback on how I presented, set up, whether or not you think my voice is doing good, if I seemed comfortable on camera, if this looks great, my visage, all that good stuff. Because I want to make sure that sexual health remains primary touring company we have the time we have the space we have the energy we have the technology and we're going to bring back these videos full time i have the staff and the strength and the community to support it now so let's go give me your feedback comments below